Well, hello there, gang, and welcome back. Well, I can't say welcome back. It's probably been like four years, maybe just three years, since I last recorded RimWorld. Um, this is version, I guess just version 18. Version point eighteen point one eight. Uh, the next release for the game will be the official final 1.0 release. I guess he's tired of supporting the game, Tynan Sylvester. And you can't blame him. It's been in production for a really long time, and the game has come a very long way since I first played it. Um, oh man, where do we even want to start? I'm not going to go over every single mod that I have and what it does. I'm simply going to scroll down... And you guys are free to pause it and look at the mods and then search for the names yourselves on Steam. Uh, I am not using any mods from the forums. Everything I have installed is strictly from the workshop. And as far as I know, it is all in proper load order as well as uh, being compatible with each other. There's a few questionable issues I have, primarily dealing with menus uh, and things like that, but it's it's nothing game-breaking. But as you can see, there's a ton of mods. It's really why I don't want to go over it. Once uh, 1.0 releases, and I'm certain that mods are going to be stable for a very long time, because there won't be any big significant core changes going on to the base game, uh, then I might do an in-depth series where I talk about what all the mods are and all of the changes that are going to take place in the game due to it. But this is not that time. Uh, this game has so many mods. <laughs> it's a great game without the mods, but damn. You can just add so much depth and alter the gameplay so significantly. It's very mod friendly, if you can't tell. I've heard of people having upwards of like 300 mods running perfectly fine together. But that's my loadout. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start a new colony, obviously. I already have a scenario, uh, Emergent Tribe. I'm not gonna let you guys see everything that I have set up here because some of it is uh, just planned for the future. I'll let you know that I have a permanent game condition set. We have auroras. A brilliant aurora has lit up the night sky. The undulating colors will boost the mood of anyone outside to see them. And um, that is pretty much it. We This is a tribe start. It's basically the lost tribe, just tweaked a very minor, minor bit. Um, so if you've ever seen one of those, that's basically what this is going to be. I don't start with a ton of supplies. I don't start with a bunch of weapons or research unlocked. And if I'm being honest, I don't even know exactly how long this series will go on. I'm not going to save scum. I'm not going to save load. What happens will happen. And if for some reason we get wiped out, you know, three videos in, then so be it. I am using a double population mod. I think that we will go with... I generally like Randy Random. Just because I like having... painful things happen early on and not having to wait... 20 to 30 hours into the playlist before uh, they start hitting you. I think we'll do Randy. Also, I'm on... This is tough. The difficulty you can change at any point in time. I'm pretty sure you can even change your storyteller, too. Because of all of the mods that I've got, the game is easier in some aspects and much harder in others. Uh, I think we're just going to do some challenge for now. I'm really tempted just to do base builder. But I think I can do some challenge and record. Uh, off screen, I would most likely try rough and just eventually get my ass kicked over time, but if I tried rough right now while recording this for the first time in ages, uh, I'd be completely screwed. As for seed, it doesn't really matter. Okay, yeah, P-Cump. We'll use my name as the seed, and global coverage will be 50%. 
I don't really want to do 100% global coverage. I don't need it, it's overkill, and it might even slow the game down significantly later on due to all of the other factions in the world. I don't know if that takes, um, I don't know if the game takes that into effect, all of the other factions that are spawned around the world. I'm going to assume it does, and my game has had some strange performance issues after spending about 20 plus hours with a colony. I have done a little bit of testing with this. I wanted to make sure that I could play for quite a long time without uh, without any crashes. Strange bugs and glitches I'm fine with. They can add flavor to a playthrough. But crashing and losing all the progress in a video is absolutely no good. So yeah, you can see there's a lot of different factions in the world. Don't know what faction those guys are, really. Uh, we've got a Star Wars faction, Rebels, and the Empire, complete with weapons and armor from those, uh, those worlds as well. Those stories or worlds from those other dimensions. This is a rim world where tons of things have been crushed together in a dimension. Everybody's being forced to live on this world and mingle together due to some god wanting to simply be amused. The question is, where do we want to start? As a tribe, it's going to be a long, long game, provided we don't get killed quickly. This is a very long game. I'm going to be recording this kind of like I did with my old Dwarf Fortress Let's Plays where I record for a little bit of time and then I let time pass off screen while things are caught up and I pause it and come back if something really interesting starts to happen. I'm not going to cover every single little minuscule detail of my colonists life in this world. I do want things to happen in the videos without having to go hours and hours between the next interesting thing. Oh, where do we want to start? Arid Shrubland. I refuse to start anywhere that doesn't have some mountains. Or at least large hills. I would prefer mountains. I kind of like this area. Hmm. Large hills, large hills. I need some place that has mountains and year-round growing and is also preferably close to a road system with some other factions on it this is a busy area impassable mountainous mountainous there I don't really want to start on a river here's mountainous unfortunately not a year-round growing period small hills telling you I am very particular year-round mountainous arid shrubland plants are hardy and there's a moderate density of animals that's good this is like one really long Australian outback road with almost nothing nothing down it for a thousand miles or so we can also start in the tropical rainforest. Mountainous. That would put us within a caravan distance of the main artery here. Hmm. What to do? Starting in a tropical rainforest would have its benefits. I would not have to set up a farm very quickly for trees. Average disease frequency 2. Average disease frequency 1. And it has a special feature of caves. That could be incredibly useful. So out of these two starting positions, I don't really like the average disease frequency. I want that to be as low as possible. So, arid shrubland. Open plains with grasses and bushes. We're going to have some difficulty here, and we'll just have to see how it goes. I think I'm going to make the world medium 275. Uh, it's so tempting. Yeah, 300, maybe? 
it's like I'm a little bit worried about performance but at the same time I'm also worried about not having a lot of uh, space to screw around I think we'll do 275 Cause for starting season doesn't particularly matter average temperature Winter temperature and summer temperature are ba is basically the same thing. I'm actually slightly worried about the summer temperature for my brewing operation. We'll use those settings. And who do we got to start? I'm not entirely sure why I can't change... Why can't I change their nicknames? What does this button do? Oh god, what do all these settings do? I'm not going to prepare carefully. By the way, I've already got us set up with starting with everything that I want, and I don't need to go into super in-depth detail. Uh, before I look at the change any names, let's see. Team skills, we need someone that is highly intellectual. Like, we really need it. That's one of the most important things when you start out as a tribe, if you want to make any progress. They don't need to have high intellectual to start with. They just have to have the option of getting there with uh, their passion. A dual flame like this means they learn twice as quick or something like that. They learn a whole lot quicker. That's, that's all that matters. Like Kanga, I don't like you very much. You, you're very good at medicine. But you're a pyromaniac. I think we're going to try to randomize her out. For a decent intellectual. Psychopath, that's always one. Another pyromaniac. There's a lot of things that can work against you if they have as a trait. I'm not going to try to min-max and get rid of every single negative one. But I'm not taking a pyromaniac. They can fuck right off and go find some other colony to terrorize. Now that guy had 11 intellect, but he didn't have a passion for it. It's like everyone who has a passion for it also starts with their skill super low. I'm going to continue to hit random. Until we find it. There we go. Incapable of violence, firefighting, cleaning, hauling, and mining. That's great. All I need you for is to cram your brain full of knowledge. Chemical interest. That's exciting. You're also a really good doctor. Really good at social skills, too. Okay. Short identifier. This is displayed at all times. Could be the first or last name or a completely separate nickname. Who is this going to be? This will be Fifi. Scorpion, your skills are no good. Absolute rubbish. And you have a passion for almost nothing. So we need a good cook or someone good at construction. Which are actually right next to each other. I would even take somebody who's got a lot of passion for a lot of things. At least then we could have like a jack of all trades. That can pick up any skill relatively quick. Okay. You're good at cooking. You've got a good passion for it. Humps, apparently is your nickname. You're pretty, you're aesthetic, and you're a healer. That's actually really beneficial for us. You're also good at taming animals. So you could tame them and then slaughter them. I think that works for me. Damn. Also, Humps, you are going to be... Um... Revy. Red. It's like... As I go through and look at their skills, they're all just a bundle of disappointment. You're really good at growing. You're even better at growing because you've actually got a passion for it. Unfortunately, you are 87 years old. You are too close to death for me to worry about. I also, by the way, don't care about melee skill. If they can't shoot, I don't want them. 
good melee skill, good medicine, good construction, but again, I don't care about melee skill. Oh, what do I want your skills to be? Melee in this game is suicidal. I could use somebody who's got good mining, right? You've got eight. Your skills are actually fine, Callie. You're 26. You're a masochist. Animal friend. Green thumb jealous. Eh, jealous isn't too good, but... I'll keep it. Try. You're really good on, on a lot of things. Crafting 12 is nice. Psychically sensitive sucks. Intimidating, trigger happy, nervous. You're gonna... You're a pyromaniac too. God dang it. To relieve stress, she will occasionally go on random fire starting sprees. No, because I run my colonies on low morale for a very long time. And I can't have somebody starting fires regularly. I, God dang it, I hate getting rid of her too. So what is she good at? She's really, I need somebody who's really good at crafting, I think. Crafting isn't too terribly important, I guess. Okay. Scrapper, strong back, idiot savant. Global learning factor is really good. His work speed, not so hot. That would actually be fine if I wanted you for like crafting or something. Here we go. Brock. He's got chemical damage on his right kidney. He's got a psychite addiction. I don't even know what Psychite is. It's, you're gonna be fucked up for a long time, aren't you? Prostophobe. Doesn't want additional body parts from robots tacked on. Careful shooter and fortune finder. Okay. Brock, you get to stay. Um, you're gonna be Shinmera. If I'm spelling that name wrong, I will fix it. It's a shame I can't... Okay, I can change it. Put Brock back there. So you got Revy, Fifi. Very enduring. 50. I kind of just want to randomize you a little bit. Wow, 15 intellectual. Be still my beating heart. Alboyo Lear. Capable of just about everything. That's good. Grifted, gifted, psychically sensitive again. It's so bad. So disgusting. I think we will take you, though. You are going to be... Hmm. Ah. Lear KT. Or is it KT with a space? I'll have to go back and check comments. I'm horrible at remembering names. My apologies. I'm so much better at remembering faces. Um... And then Kai here. Are you all females? Female, 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 male, male. Okay, two males, three females. That's fine. Do I have anybody good in reserve? No, not particularly. Black Eagle. Okay, Conga? You're gone. I'm sorry. Just no good. We're gonna take Black. He's a lore keeper. Good at... Kinda good at social skills, a little bit acceptable on everything else. He's a fast walker, a pack rat. He can carry more. He's a pessimist. He's nervous. He's a jury rigger and he's a scrapper. And this is gonna be me. That's plump. <laughs> Who else did you think it was gonna be? And uh, we're good on everything but cooking, which we are going to be able to learn fairly quickly. And it's not like we need high cooking skills when we're starting out. Speaking of cooking, now my stomach is grumbling. I'm getting hungry just thinking about all of the grilled vegetables we're going to be grilling in game. And all the pemmican we can eat. Your group knows nothing of this world and must scrape out an existence from the dirt. It is unlikely the denizens of this planet will welcome your newfound freedom. So, the backstory for our characters... Uh, is that we were slaves, all five of us. And in the middle of the night, a bunch of robots descended on the camp and slayed the slavers. We got their weapons, 
bows and shit. You know what? I need to check. This is actually a good starting area. Okay. This is a good starting area. I can wall this off. Or, even better, I can wall this off here. And wall this off. And I can have this whole area to myself. Enemies won't generally mess with the wall. We got some rhinos trapped in there if we do that quickly. Oh, goody! Here's the cave system filled with fucking insects. Filthy, disgusting bugs. We need to seal this off so they can't come up here easy. It's gonna be a real punch in the dick if I try to mine back through there and build a base. Hmm. There's no buildings near us, unfortunately, that we can dive into. I guarantee you these two squares here are actually ancient danger. Um, I'm really debating right now on what I want to do. I could re-roll my map. Start a new one. I hate, I hate bugs. I don't know what it takes, but eventually these damn things right here, the hives, begin to reproduce and just pump out more and more bugs. And I won't be prepared to deal with them for a while, and I think they can even dig, if I'm not mistaken. I've talked myself into re-rolling. This is another mod, map re-roll. That's what the cave system is. I think cave systems apparently always have bugs. This would be an interesting start area. Wall that off, have this be the no man's land. We can mine back in through here. Hmm. Isn't this so much better than having to exit out and re-roll your map every time, folks? I know some of you would just accept whatever embark you get, but damn it. I want choices. I want Dwarf Fortress level of granularity whenever I zoom into the map so I can choose something super detailed. This would be an interesting start. We could wall this off, no. Enemies have to have a way to get into your base. So if I walled this off, they would I would have to like make a path up here, maybe. Force them to come here. Wall this off, they would have to go all the way around. Hmm. It's tempting. There's so many choices. Getting a good defensive position in this game makes all the difference. It's honestly the reason I don't enjoy starting on a flat area like the plains. Or out in the flat desert. This is already bad enough with as few trees as there are. It'll make it a little bit more difficult, though. I think I can manage. This would be another interesting one. I have to mine through there, though. It's possible I'm going to hit cancel and we're just going to stay on this map. Sometimes being given choice is also a bad thing. Go through there now. This will be the last page. And then I'm just going to hit cancel and say screw it. It's not a terrible setup that we've got here. Start here this to mine, a wall, nah, there'll be insects there, okay, we will just stay here on this planet, or on this map, oh man, map reroll, we'll keep this map, that was good enough, okay, if I'm not mistaken, everybody is capable of violence, can't do dumb labor, no, PP. Go there for now. You can't do anything. Revy, you can fight. Shinmara, you can fight. And KT, you can fight. So Plump, grab a bow. Revy, you get a bow. And Shinmara, you get a bow. I also have a mod called, um, like, I think real sidearms or sidearms or something like that. And, whoops. I didn't want to do that. Equip that as a sidearm. Uh, that way you can have your characters equip melee weapons for when the enemy gets up close. Say you've got a long-range rifle, um, you can give them a submachine gun or a pistol or a friggin' energy sword up close. 
it's really useful. Also, war. The Rebel Alliance has declared war on the Galactic Empire. Infighting may occur on your territory. Wonderful. The Empire and Rebels are here. Um, man, there is so much we need to do to start off. I don't even know where to begin sometimes. This is the hardest part of the game, is getting set up. First things first, let me set um, animal area. I think. Make this whole area here. The allowed area animal area. This is where your animals can wander around and look for food. I'll hopefully seal most of this off soon. Up here. Predators can wander onto your maps and absolutely eat everything. Growing zone. This is another thing that I need to get set up really quick. So... Because we, we don't have an unlimited supply of food. We'll do these in 2 by 15 segments. I'm going to do a lot of these. That's probably a bit of overkill, but I don't care. Also... We'll do... That should be fine. This is going to be for trees, because since we are in the desert and I am going to need a lot of wood as a tribe, I can't necessarily work with steel all the time. Uh, I probably even need a bigger plot than that, if I'm being honest, when it comes to actually uh, being realistic about how many trees I'm going to need. I might put another rectangle down here at some point. So on this one we'll leave potatoes and we're gonna go with turnips. Didn't actually want to click the question. Turnips. Um, let's do tomatoes. I don't think it really matters honestly. Some of this is just for flavor. We're gonna do spectigo on that one and on this one that's so much spec to go that's overkill for sure <laughs> I'm gonna have to turn that off after like the first harvest or so and I also need where is it why can't I see it cotton because it was all the way hidden at the very top cotton is how we get fabric early on in the game so we've got potatoes turnips you know what fuck turnips Potatoes and tomatoes would be good enough to start with. And I think, where is it? I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna roll you up and smoke you. Maybe I can't. There we go, tobacco. Tobacco lets you create cigars and cigarettes, which is really useful. And here, we will grow birch trees, I think. They grow in 20 days. They give a decent amount of lumber. And uh, it already pains me enough to have to wait 20 days. Ooh. Human leather? Oh, wait, fuck. No. Mm. No, fuck human leather. And human meat. That must be what's left of the humans after the machines freed us last night. I don't think I want anything to do with those. If I unforbid the human meat, my... Citizen, my, my colonist might actually be dumb enough to eat it. Dumping pile. I never really know where to put these either. Dumping piles can be useful if you want to create like a rock wall. Like let's say... Let's say I'll be defending my base from... Here. Actually, this would be a good spot. No, because enemies could come up through here. I need... How about... This is awfully close to my fields. I'm going to regret this. We'll make that a dump spot. <laughs> right there. Just for now. And actually, also... No. I could maybe... Maybe right there, too. That'll act as a wall of rocks. 
that I can move at some point. They'll bear, they'll dump them there. And these are the granite chunks that I'm talking about, the rocks. They provide 50% cover effectiveness. Which means you can hide behind them and get shot less. I'm going to unpause it. Uh, going to repause it. <laughs> Cooking, who? I need to check everybody's skills. Plant cut and plant grow. For now, I want everybody doing that. It's not like I've got anything else going on. And I need those fields planted ASAP. Study, teach, therapist. We've got a lot of people who can do therapy. That's good. Everyone's checked up on research. Hunting is not so important. And I'll tell you guys why here in a little bit, provided I actually remember. Okay, structure. We've got a decent amount of wood, so let's build a little housing here. That takes 45 wood. We'll do... Actually, no, fuck that. Keep it right in line. The field's down there. Nine by whatever gets us there. That way there's still a little bit of a gap for them to walk through. Don't get them pinched off. Uh, doors, of course. How about... One right here. One of the first things I want to build my colonists is simply a place to sleep. They will get incredibly sleepy or incredibly grumpy if I make them sleep on the ground outside. I'm gonna put a roof area over this even though I'm pretty damn sure it would um, automatically be roofed in. Also, something else I'm going to need. And I think, I think I'm actually going to dig for it is a stockpile area. Which does need to be fairly large. There'll be a decent amount of crafting that actually takes place in my stockpile room for quite some time. Uh -oh. I'm surprised I can't click on that work action there. I did set that to mine, right? Thought I can always click on that before. Uh, what do I want to add in here? We've got a gov fruit. Wonderful. See, my things that are left outside are deterior deteriorating because they are unroofed. The sun is beating down on them and destroying them. I think I'll actually put some stockpile in here for now. Just to hurry this up. Stockpile zone. Make that a whopping 3x7. And guess what you get to sleep on, my friends? A sleeping spot! One, two, three, four, five. That's right! You all get your very own little sleeping spot on the ground. I feel so bad for him. Uh, we need also a place to do hygiene. I completely forgot about that. The latrine. Um, let's put on the back side for now. And we'll put wash buckets out here too. Ancient danger. Where the hell are you guys going? Drinking area? Is that because of the shallow water over there? Fuck. I guess that's not too terribly bad, but I forgot that I was going to need to take care of water. So, water drawing spot. I'm going to have to put one of those down, apparently. And water boxes. Um, one, two, three, four. Where is the first thing I need to build? Butchering table, no. Tempting. 
got art spots, butchering spots, brewing spots, a research spot. <laughs> I definitely need one of those. I'll put it right there in the corner. Needs a research project. Well, my dear friend, underground water. That's the first thing you're gonna research. That allows us to make a well so that we can draw water out of it without having to run all the way across the map and wasting a significant amount of time. Next thing I want to research would be that, but there are some more important things that I need to actually take care of first, as tempting as it is to dive into the fun cult stuff. I just have to find what I'm looking for. Research flowers and trees to plant. I don't care about that, actually. I don't really care about agriculture either. Unlocks sowing of snow beets, beans, and red lentils. Smoke leaf cultivation is tempting because there is a lot of things you can make from that. Basic prosthetics. Also another very important one. Which I'm really tempted. We'll make that number two for now. Eventually I have to research almost all of the ones that have uh, their research points right here in white. If it's white, it means that's the level you're on. You don't get a penalty whenever you research them. If it's green, uh, congratulations. You're going to be spending a lot more time researching it than if you had just moved on. Basic traps. Put that number three. Beekeeping four. Flowers and trees five. Six for the devil strand. Again, I've ooh, tribal warfare. Allows the creation of tribal weapons and armor. Not too terribly important, actually. Despite the fact that I'm doing a tribal start, uh, there's no guarantee that we'll have tribal weapons for a very long period. You see, we're going to be raided at some point. And the way the game works, it generally doesn't overwhelm you the first raid with like 12 guys or so it'll just send one and the first guy will have a good weapon unless it's a club or a shank or something but the first time a guy shows up with just one weapon well then we've now got a legitimate defense ability on our hands like we get a machine gun or a laser gun exploding crossbow bolts or something got a lot of mods that add a lot of different weapons and well they can help us out early on you gotta remember the enemy still has all of those weapons as well and there's no telling what they might show up with <sighs> okay Fifi tending to nugget you know what one thing I need to, to, to do have I already lost you stupid Muffalo, why would, why would you, why would you go to where the bugs are? Don't go to where the bugs are, Fifi. You don't go to where the bugs are either. Son of a bitch. Already starting off wonderful. Okay, turn handle off. Oh, good lord. That is fun. Are you still going to attempt to tend to nugget? Because I'm not going to let you. Nugget, the animals are, are done for. Combat, you might be able to make it out, but Nugget, you're totally screwed. Oh my god, look at all the bugs that are out here. How am I ever going to deal with all of that crap? I hope they stay there forever. Somehow, combat made it out. I know why you jerks attacked it. It's just because it's me. Because it was my muffalo. My sweet little nugget. My tendies. My tendy nuggets that you just killed in the cave. Like, why are so many... Oh, God, because there's a drinking area there? Fifi. I swear to God. You no longer have handle enabled. Homing slate chunk. That's one of the things I've noticed, and I don't know exactly if it's the game or if it's a mod. But, uh, sometimes my 
My colonists just don't listen to me. Oh, and a gigantic rad scorpion. Isn't that exciting? This place is horrible. This place is awful. Tons of animals. Komodo dragons, too. <laughs> Fucking Komodo dragons. Revy? Why are you tending to Nugget now? He did have it enabled at one point. I swear if... I swear, Revy. Do you just go sow the area? Next person who worries about Nugget is gonna get to go see what happened to Nugget. Wish I could, uh... Actually just kick them out. You are banished. You're banished from the colony, animal. You are completely dead to us. And Fifi is still trying to go. Just, just please, sow the area. You guys are being so annoying. This is one of the things that I was worried about. <laughs> Whenever I, before I started recording was, uh, my guy's not always paying attention to me. I swear to God. What if I set that to nine? Really? Go so. No one else cares about the animals, neither should you. You know what? What if I restrict you to the home area, you piece of shit? What about that, colonist? Are you still gonna backtalk me? Nugget is no longer incapable of walking. Fifi, you're restricted to the home area too. Well, if Nugget can walk, then Nugget can walk his own sweet ass back here. He'll be dead in six hours, thankfully. You broke my heart, Nugget. And worst of all, you wasted my time. And you made the colonists not listen, which could have killed them, had I not been paying attention. Uh, also, in the ongoing battle that will last forever, the ongoing battle with the work tab, where's my top researcher at? Fifi, as a matter of fact, you don't get to do any of this. You can negotiate, you can be a warden, and you can doctor. But other than that, uh, you need to constantly be researching. Now, I can't tell her to go research because research is a long-term task, which means as soon as the up, as soon as the the job updater or whatever it's called gets around to it, then uh, they'll they'll move it. I only have two people who can haul KT and Shinmira. Are you joking me? That is garbage, KT and Shinmira. <laughs> Oh, I should have been paying more attention to who could do manual labors and who would not. So, let's get some of this stuff inside to the storage before the end of the first day, please. I need to set everybody to fight except for Fifi, who is a loving pacifist, apparently. I'll manage my drug policies later. As for restrictions, I want you to sleep. Until then, and 2200 and 2300 are for joy. Unfortunately, we don't have anything for them to gain joy with, but at some point we will. I'll build these hoopstone rings back here. Actually, no, I take that back. I forgot that the bathrooms are back there. I don't need people back there. Throwing hoop stones. People are squeezing out turds behind the building. So. About on either, either, on either side of the steam geyser here. It's not like we'll be able to use the steam geyser anytime soon. Go ahead and haul more wood. Ancient danger. Where are you going? To the drinking area? No. <laughs> Why are you so bad? Go... Uh, fine, you know what? Place for drawing water. 
KT, please go here. In fact, why aren't you cocksuckers drinking the water I've got in storage? That is good water. That is purified clean water. Water for drinking, as a matter of fact. So you don't have to drink out of a dirty swamp garden and shit in by a bunch of filthy insects. Where Nugget has bled and probably pissed all over the place by now. Let's see, drawing water spot. Draw water at this spot times five. Maybe the water I've got does not count for their water, for their thirst stat. That is an entirely realistic possibility. In fact, I may have needed to start with purified water, but I don't know. Needs water. Water is the amount of water a creature has consumed recently. If it is zero, a creature will become increasingly dehydrated and eventually die. Now, when I said I would tell you guys later about a mechanic as to why I wasn't worried about Komodo dragons and other things like that, it's because of this water mechanic. It's entirely possible that they do not go to this water. That they get stuck somewhere and they just dehydrate and die. It's also possible that they are going to be smart enough to all cram themselves into one little corner sleeping in their caves where it's cool at night and drinking their swamp water. That is also a distinct possibility. KT, are you done? He's gonna draw water from the drawing spot. That is another job, by the way. I don't have anybody set to it. We'll set Shinmira and Revy and Revy to it. Somebody can always be drawing dirty, stinky, nasty, rotten swamp water and bringing it back to the stockpile for storage until I get a bunch of stuff set up to purify it. Fueled food prep table. I'm not building that because I don't believe we can effectively use it and it should really be out of our tech range. Yeah, I don't care about Nugget dying. They were bonded to KT and it will affect KT's mood, whatever. A lightweight, collapsible table for doing simple tasks while traveling. Tempted to build that. A smoker. I need 100 granite blocks. Camp butchering table. We'll butcher the animals. Outside. Of course, there's always a penalty when you place things outside. I hate placing this stuff inside, but I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to have to. So, we'll have that butchering spot there. Tailoring, researching, stone oven. A primitive stone oven for preparing mills. A step up from camp, from a campfire. It takes 50 granite blocks. Let's get a stone chipping spot set up. You know what, over here would be good. We can move this as the rocks get Removed and any stone blocks I want you to do forever. They'll take these chunks that are scattered all over the place and turn them into bricks. Also, everybody is asleep. It's the end of our first day. It's second of April, May, 5500. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end this video. I'm gonna save the game. And whenever we come back, we will continue to set up this place. We need to fortify it a little bit soon. We need to, like, wall this off. Maybe look into walling some of this off. That'll maybe be towards the end of next video. I, I need to get this place a little bit fortified from uh, the horrible things that could possibly come at us anytime. I don't fully in I don't fully trust the insects that are scattered around. Not to launch an attack on me at some point, like some type of starship troopers uh, cutscene. I also don't trust the Komodo dragons or various other animals not to decide it's a good idea to migrate straight through my camp and just eat everyone and everything. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. Hopefully this series lasts. We'll see how long it takes for a patch to break everything.